Hello, Resurrection and St. Michael parishioners. This is Father Tom sharing a video that um, was recorded and sent out to St. Anne parishioners this week, uh, which I think some of you might appreciate. A few uh, Eastside Parish members saw it on YouTube or Facebook and thought it would be good to share. So quick things is an email and a video that um, I've been sending out to parishioners at St. Anne's for the last three years or so, uh, since March of 2020, when, when COVID began and we've just continued. It's a weekly um, run through of announcements, observation on things that are happening in the in the parish, in the community, in the country, the world, um, as well as sharing some interesting videos and columns and things like that. So it's a hodgepodge of things and sometimes often a conversation with people in the parish or other places, just interesting folks who have are doing or have are doing interesting things have interesting experiences to share. This week's quick things deals as you might imagine then with the uh, announcements over this past weekend of my being named as pastor of St. Michael and Resurrection in addition to St. Anne. And so um, I, I think it's fairly um, applicable to all of us. And so I want to share that, share this video with you. It does refer to a quick things email um, and a column that was a link that was in that email. Well, that, that same column, a link to that column was in the email that parishioners received um, on Sunday sharing this news. Um, and it'll also, that column will also be in this week's um, worship aid or bulletin at mass. So you'll be able to access it there even if you can't get it in the quick things email. So I hope you I hope the video is is appreciated or helpful. If not, that's fine too. Um, you know this might be something that we pursue um, in our parishes as we go forward. Um, I think it's a good way to communicate and um, it offers an opportunity for me at least to share some things that you really can't do at mass or in the bulletin. And some people have found it to be worthwhile. So anyway, here's this week's quick things, which ad addresses um, the new appointments that Bishop Callahan has made. On Sunday, it was announced, this goes to the title of today's, of this week's quick things is three better than one. It was announced that I have been appointed uh, pastor of St. Michael and Resurrection Parishes in addition to my ongoing uh, ministry as pastor of St. Anne. Someone wasn't sure from the announcement whether I was still staying, was I, whether I was going to be at St. Anne anymore or whether I would just be there. Oh no, it's all three. <laughs> well, why, why have one parish when you could have three, right? Well, it's not so much a question of whether three is better than one. It's just a, a matter of um, responding to the circumstances that prompt this assignment and the bishop's um, decision to, to go in that direction. Of course, as I indicated on Sunday, uh, this is all really possible, uh, not because of my abilities, but because of the cooperation and assistance of, and talents of our staffs of the three parishes, um, of our deacons, uh, or Deacon Herb Burkhardt here in St. Anne, uh, Deacon per Peter Burick, who is originally from St. Anne, who many of you know, but has been uh, serving in, on the east side in those parishes since his ordination. And um, Deacon John McDonald, who is more recently ordained, serving Resurrection in St. Michael parishes as well with Deacon Peter. So all of the deacons will are now assigned to all three parishes or as of when all this takes effect on July 4th. And then most importantly, we will have a full-time associate pastor Father Al Sloviak, who um, in the column that was, a, there was a link in the email that parishioners received on Sunday and sharing this news. Uh, Father Al has spent most of his 50 years as a priest um, in the Wassa area. So he knows, he knows the community well. He knows many of you. He knows Catholic schools very well, although his involvement with that will be much less now that he won't, since he won't be a pastor. Um, and basically, you know, there's a lot of details to work out in terms of who's going to be responsible for what or do what and those kinds of things. But basically what I told Father Al is that um, I would hope that for, for the most part, he would be able to do what he likes to do. So um, being a priest for 50 years, um, I think he, he's earned a little, a, li a little um, uh, uh, sway in terms of 
responsibilities. I mean, he'll do the, he'll do the work of a, of a full-time associate pastor, but maybe he, can, he gets to be a little choosier in what he does. And, and others of us then can take on some of those other responsibilities. But so I, I think, I, I hope, I mean, it, I, I think it's very doable. At this point, it has to be, we have to make it work, but I'm confident that, that it is. But as I also indicated at masses this past weekend, um, I don't think that we presume that everything's just gonna be the way it's always been. Um, I think I mentioned that when I came to St. Anne and there was no longer an associate pastor um, that not everything could, could could be as it was, and I think there. I, I don't know what 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 fell by the wayside or what what was changed and how it was done or who did it, but I think some of that, honestly, realistically, um, had to occur, and I think to some degree that will be true now as well. Um, someone asked if I would ever would I would ever be having the seven a.m. seven a.m. mass on Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, and I said, well. Most of the most time or all the time I'll have that mass because Father Al is not a morning person. And so the 1210 minute 1210 mass at resurrection is perfect for him. Um, I'm not necessarily a morning person either, but but I've kind of gotten used to that um, 7 a.m. mass. Um, so we'll see. I I, I don't want to um, I told Father Al that I don't intend for us to spend a lot of time anticipating what will happen when his assignment takes effect on July 4th, because um, I know, having been in the position he's in, that you really want to have the time to tie up loose ends where you're at. So he's at St. Mark's in Rothschild. You wanna tie up, tie up those loose ends, uh, spend some good time with people you've really come to appreciate and love in the parish where you're at. Um, you need this time to say goodbye and prepare to depart, and and then when and then and we'll do a little anticipation, but to really then be, move into how how we function um, when he takes on those responsibilities as associate pastor in July. Um, so there are there are lots of questions that folks have. I'll tr I think more probably from say Michael and Resurrection, but I think they're all if they're if they have questions that are important to ask. I think it's important for us to know what their questions are and how they're approaching all this. So we'll address some of those in upcoming bulletins and quick things. I'd also maybe hope to do a quick things conversation with Father uh, Sloviak uh, before he comes aboard, maybe as time goes on with the deacons as well, just so we can uh, get to know better who they are and maybe from um, Resurrection and St. Michael's get to know them as well. What I didn't know until the appointments were uh, released on Saturday, by the way, our appointments are just some of three pages of appointments that were made by the bishop. <laughs> some of them are a little tedious in terms of what the wording is and, and, the, and why they're making the appointment, but there are three pages of them. What I didn't know is that many of them are connected with something the bishop has labeled rebuild my church, as it says here in the announcement, a three-year initiative which seeks to continue and update the efforts accomplished in strategic planning in the Diocese of La Crosse. Um, so, and, and what's what, among the appointments are several involving um, larger city parishes uh, where two or three parishes are being uh, given one pastor or a pastor and associate. So similar arrangements in Wisconsin Rapids, Chippewa Falls, where that al that has already been in place there, and Marshfield. Um, and the indications are that more of that might be coming. Some of it is contingent on geography. I mean, our parishes here in Wausau are all really fairly close together, easy to get to. You could ride a bike, you could walk. I mean, I during Lent, I walked to Resurrection for the soup lunch one, Wednesday morning and walked back to get to, ma to Mass at Benedictine Manor on Wednesday afternoon. So they're walkable, but certainly drivable. But in some cities, um, I was visiting my friend, Father Tom Craig in Eau Claire on Monday, and his parish is quite some distance, you know, four or five miles from the nearest parish, whereas we're, you know, four or five blocks, not, not quite that close, but not very far. So the geography becomes an issue with some of this, but certainly in our rural areas, we have priests driving 20, 30 miles sometimes from one parish to another. 
a pastor of these multiple uh, parishes, two, three, or four of them. So it's kind of bringing into the city what has been happening in the country. And from a geography standpoint, it's probably much easier for us. We also have staffs and things, which a lot of those parishes don't have. Um, but again, there are, but we have bigger parishes and more demands in that regard. So it, it's just, uh, uh, I, I think what the bishop is saying in this, making these initial announcements and some um, more aggressive pastoral planning that will be going on is that we're just trying to um, maybe look at some new possibilities um, or, or see what's working or not working in other places and trying to, to um, use what works. Um, some, there's some really um, huge steps are being taken in Madison in terms of parish realignment and pastoral planning. And I'll talk about that in upcoming weeks as well. Um, almost every priest in the Diocese of Madison has been reassigned into a new pastoral arrangement. And again, I'm, I don't want to get into all that now, but I'll talk about that. So we're kind of kind of just taking baby steps to get into that. But in some ways, we've already taken steps. I mean, I was pastor of two parishes in Stevens Point that went through a unification process. That's not what's at play here, For sure, just to be clear on that, and I'll address that. Um, in this, in an upcoming bulletin and quick things as well. But uh, it is what is happening among us or will be happening as we go through the summer and in the years ahead is part of what Bishop Callahan has called rebuild my church. He takes that from the instruction of Jesus to um, St. Francis of Assisi, um, you know, very different situ well, I guess a different situation, but also somewhat similar. The Bishop doesn't want it to be seen as just a means of aligning parishes, but how can we help um, grow the church in terms of evangelization and things like that? And while it might seem that that's defeatist and that, you know, you're giving um, one pastor to three parishes where there used to have three pastors, one pastor for each of those parishes, it's not a matter of how many pastors we have in terms of what, how we evangelize and how we bring, how we open our doors and how we bring new, new people to to worship and to, to be part of our of our church. So that's where it behooves those of us who are here, pastors and people, to um, come to some better awareness of how we fulfill the gospel mission to proclaim the good news to all people. So there we go. How's that for a, a mission statement? I think Jesus gave us that, and we're still trying to figure that out. So that's kind of uh, a little bit more um, on the um, new assignment. The link to the bulletin column that was with Sunday's announcement is in the Quick Things email that will also be in this coming Sunday's uh, worship aid. And, um, and we will have much more to say and reflect upon about this in weeks ahead. Finally, I want to share a prayer from Thomas Merton, a uh, famous Trappist monk. Um, Father Lewis was his name in the community. He was a member, he was part of the Gethsemane Abbey of the Trappist community um, in Kentucky. And probably his most, his most famous writing was in a book called Thoughts on Solitude, Thoughts in Solitude. And um, some people call it the Merton Prayer. Um, I, I usually call it the My Lord God Prayer. That's how it starts out. But I was reminded of it by Sunday's Gospel when Thomas says, Jesus, how do we know the way? We don't know the way. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, of course, as we know. Um, and this prayer always reminds me of that. I kind of wanted to work it into my homily on Sunday, and I knew we had other things to talk about, and I didn't want to make the homily too long, and so it kind of got cut, but I want to share it today. And also to let you know that there's a musical version of this prayer. There's a, an a cappella group, male, male a cappella group from the Twin Cities called Cantus. And they, I mean, it's just beautiful uh, music that they produce. And there's a video of them singing uh, a, a, a musical version of this song. It's a tango kind of thing, um, but, but a, a, a beautiful piece. And I've shared that video in the Quick Things email. So um, in addition to hearing the prayer now, I, I invite you to listen to Contus sing the prayer 
uh, in a very beautiful rendition. And I'll try to remember to include a text of the prayer in the quick things as well. Several people often ask for that. So we'll conclude with this prayer from Thomas Merton. I probably also a good prayer as we go into this new experience of um, three parishes, one pastor and an associate pastor, and uh, lots, hundreds and hundreds of good people. And so how can it fail? But we still uh, know where to turn for direction in all of that. And so calling upon the words of Father Thomas Burton. My Lord God, I have no idea where I am going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think I am following, you, following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope I have that desire in all that I am doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore, I will trust you always, though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death. I will not fear, for you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. Amen. <laughs>